Hello, uh, here's uh, Frank's Home 100, uh, part two, fourth day, first video. And uh, I want to say I'm sorry about the sound. It's been drawn to my attention. My dear friend in Germany, uh, Shirley, has pointed out that the, my camera is failing. Uh, the sound has got a mono, not stereo sound. Sorry, uh, maybe after payday I'll, I'll buy another camera, but this, the flip has done me well. It, it was 180 days of teaching last year, and all across Europe it took me, so flip, you've done very well. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> I, the last time I spoke to you, uh, or gave a course, I, I said that, I think, no, it wasn't the last time. I said that um, maybe you should, you should, no, not maybe, you should view um, as you like it, and I showed you the version of it. Uh, if, if you were my ninth graders uh, in a class, and you were, you had already taken my eighth grade course at the beginning of the year, I thought that would be a fine way to start the year. Well, that's, that would have taken a, a week's time. Uh, now I would tell you that uh, with Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, is the one that, it, it, I think if I had ninth graders, probably, maybe not at the beginning of the year, but I would use Romeo and Juliet to, to teach with. And, uh, and, and I would have them read that play, my students read that play. But the thing is, not all of it. Uh, I am reading it currently, and this is so much fun. Uh, my, my German friend, uh, Shirley, it brought me this. It's in German. Uh, Romeo und Julia. Uh, and uh, I know the play so well that I know what all the characters are saying, and so the German is difficult. Uh, but I, I, I understand what I'm saying. Uh, I read a little bit along with uh, Shirley, uh, the two of us together. We read the balcony scene. That was, that was fun. <laughs> The thing is, she told me that uh, the trouble is, you, you may understand it, but you're saying the words all wrong. Oh well, uh, it's still fun. But anyway, for you who do not speak German yet, I don't think, I would recommend reading Romeo and Juliet. But I would get a copy, <clears throat> I think they called it the Penguin Editions, I'm not sure about that, or the Fol Folger series, I should have brought one down from upstairs, that had the text. On the one side, the text on the one side, and the the notes on the other side, so, because there, you really need notes to understand Shakespeare. And what was most fun for me uh, with with these plays was when I had the club, the uh, Shakespearean troupe. We put on Romeo and Juliet maybe three times. The first time very well. But any time that we put on a play, I would have a, a reading. Uh, the, the characters would get around and we would read through the play. <clears throat> and that was better really than teaching it because each character knew that they were going to have to say these words on stage. And they needed to know what they were saying. Well, I, I would have already cut many lines from it. In effect, made a screenplay. That's what uh, Kenneth Branagh did with uh, Much Ado About Nothing. He, you didn't see the whole play. You saw a screen, the, the screenplay. You heard the screenplay. The words were Shakespeare's, but not all of them were there. <clears throat> and I think that's okay, because times have changed, and it's hard to... Uh, it, some of these, it, it just disturbs it too much to, for the explanation. So with my students, we would read... And I would say, do you understand what, what, what Juliet has said right there? And if they didn't, I would explain it. That was a wonderful way to teach, uh, I, I think, uh, Romeo, and uh, Romeo and Juliet or Shakespeare. And the best of all is to watch it. Uh, the Zeffirelli version done in the 1960s is the one for Romeo and Juliet that I think you should watch. And it, since you were my students last year, in my mind, I've told you the plot. And uh, I've shown you a lot of Shakespeare and Love, which now, as ninth graders, you might be more ready to, to watch. Okay, we're going to go outside. There's going to be two, uh, a field trip today. We're going to take a look, another look at the beast. And uh, I'm going to talk about recycling when we get out there. Uh, 
There was enough interest by the, the, the uh, views of my video in The Beast that I thought, well, it's worth it to go back. And we're going to go over to my neighbor's barn. And I say, and Ibid. Ibid is a short way to say, same as above. You would read that as recycling. The neighbor's barn and recycling. You see the and, that's the key, and recycling. Slightly shorter, and it gives me a chance to teach again how Ibid can be used. And my subject there is going to be timber framing. Uh, very soon, or well, uh, soon, I, I hope it's very soon, I'm going to start to uh, show you uh, details of my tour d'Europe, my trip across Europe, and timber framing will be a leitmotif of that. All right, well, I don't want to go on any longer. We're going to, going to go on to videos 2.4.2 and 2.4. 4.3, I guess is the way I'll probably put them. The same day, but we're going to go outside now, so see you soon.